Okay, so let's go ahead and take, it is our custom here at Stronghold. Take your Bibles in your right hand and hold them high over your head and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. My goal today is to know the voice of God, to understand my assignment, and to walk in my calling. If you believe it, shout glory. I want you to turn your Bibles this morning to a very familiar passage of scripture in the book, in the gospel recorded, brother, by St. John, the 15th chapter. St. John, the 15th chapter. St. John, the 15th chapter. Yes, 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 yes. What a season it is. What a terrific time it is in the body of Christ. We do know and we have been taught that this battle is not ours, but it is the Lord's. So Christians, uh, family members, let me say this to you. This is the season for change to take place. And I'm talking to people right now who I believe that have the heart of God, who understand the plan and the purpose of God who have come to this sanctuary and who have tuned in to us week after week after week and praying for a move of God. And church, listen, here's the amazing thing to me, and I, I'm going to get there. I've noticed in the world that everybody is doing their thing. The Braves played the other night, and they had standing room only. The Hawks played, and they were selling tickets just for standing room only. The restaurants are full of people, with people waiting outside to get in. Family, listen to me. You cannot eat with a mask on your face. Stay with me, family. Every place I have gone, I have just driven down the roads and just to see what's available, Walmart, uh, 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 Target, all of Ross, and all of the other things that we go to are packed. But when it comes down to the only place that has power, I'm confused. I ain't talking about nobody, but I'm confused that nobody comes to church or people don't come to church but we'll go to work tomorrow morning sit next to somebody bump fist with somebody do whatever but yet still we won't come to church my brothers and my sisters please hear me the word of the Lord says to fail not to assemble yourselves together with believers that is not an option that is a command I'm talking to people this morning who are sold out on Jesus. I'm not talking about people who are going out on a date with him. I'm talking about people who are in a relationship with him and who know that the importance and that strength comes to those who are younger in the Lord than we are from our presence and our prayers and our ability to move forward in the let me go ahead and, and, uh, and preach this message Ah, uh, yes. John chapter 15, beginning at verse number 15. John chapter 15, verse 15, it says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you can I read this one more time I no longer do call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing but I call you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit 
should remain in. That whatever, catch this, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Verse 17. These things, I want you to catch this. You miss this, you'll miss everything. These things I command you that you love one another. For the sake of the title to this message this morning, I, I want you to take notes. I want you to do whatever you need to do. I want to minister to you from this thought. This is the season for growth. This is the season for growth. Would you look at the person standing next to you and ask them this question? Do you have the power? And have you been given the power to go to the next level? Wait on an answer, wait on an answer, wait on an answer. Wait on an answer. All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you got it, I want you to say amen. Listen, family, I'm going to need you to take some notes this morning because the whole purpose of any message is that we not just keep this message to ourselves. But it is important that we are in a position where we can share the message with those who are in our immediate circle. The reason being is because we have a level of influence over those people. May I suggest to you, God did not save you just so that you could go to heaven. He saved you so that you could be a witness to the world of the kingdom of God. So family, this morning, I really need you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Because we are on an assignment and God has given his church, he has given his church the opportunity to complete the work that we have been called to do. Please hear me. We have been trained. We have been going to Bible study for years now. My question is, because we've been going to Bible study, when are we going to take the test? There is no need for us to go to Bible study and not take the test and pass it. Family, I really need you to come in a little closer because there are some things that God is saying in this season that maybe we are not aware of because of our status quo. Or maybe we think that we have arrived because of what we are going through. But family, let me say this to you. Everything that we are going through, we are supposed to go through it. Are you listening to me? Every problem that we've gone through, every situation that we, notice what I'm saying, we've come through it. I want you to think about the things that you said that you would never be able to overcome. But look at you now. It was not because of your goodness. It was because of the grace and the mercies of God that you overcame your situation and your circumstances. You didn't make it because you look good. You didn't make it because of status quo. You made it because of the relationship that you had with God. And if anybody ought to be in a place where every time we come together, we ought to be dancing it ought to be the redeemed of the Lord. Do I have anybody in the room that understands what I'm talking about? Family, listen to me. To whom much is given, much is required. Catch this. We are going to have to pay for the training that God has given us. It was not in vain. Please tell me that God did not save us for nothing. Please tell me that the devil is not that big, that he has overcome us where we look more at him than we do at God. Please tell me that the time that you cried and the time that you prayed and the time that you've been by yourself 
please tell me that your area or your time of deliverance was not so you could just say you came out. How did you feel when you come out the wilderness? Please tell me that there was a purpose in mind and that you have grown and that you're stronger because of what you went through. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying? The question becomes, this was the question that we were asked, who will go and who can I sin? Who will go and who can I sin? No cross, no crown. The birds have nests. The fox have holes. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his hand. The harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. If the church is waiting for people to come to us, they are not coming. There's a world out there of people that don't know Jesus. And it's our responsibility to go out and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. He died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose, and when he rose, he rose with all power. And because he had power, he transferred the power to those of us who are called the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Is anybody listening to me? The word of the Lord says, work while it's day. Why? Because the night is coming, family. Listen, I believe it was Job who said, a man that was born of a woman is only but a few days. May I suggest to you that people are dying every second. Somewhere in the number when we were born we were given a number and when that number is called we're going to have to answer please hear me family please hear me we're sitting here acting like we're going to live forever but may I suggest to you what if what if your number is called today what would the Lord be able to say about you? What would you be able to say when they call the road? Will there be anybody in heaven because of you? Will there be anybody that says the reason that I'm here is because you shared the good news of Jesus Christ? Or will it be that I made it and I made it and I made it and I made it? That is not why we were called. Family, if you don't get anything else from me, I want you to get this today because the word of the Lord is forever present and he watches over his word to perform it. May I suggest to you that God may be tired of us. How many times does he have to come and tell us the same story over and over Again, how many times does he have to deliver us before we are delivered? Somebody stay in the room with me. Where are you going? Because that has nothing to do with the text. Well, I'm glad that you asked me about the text. Are you ready for the text? Let's go to verse 15. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants. I need you to, if your Bible is not too holy, can you put a line under that word servant? For a servant does not, here's the description, a servant does not know what his master is doing. Let that resonate in your hearts just for a moment. I want you to be able to walk out of here and teach this one. But I have called you friend. Well, how did we get to that place? Everybody starts as a servant. We come into the room and accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you a definition for both. So just hold on for a minute. But he says... For all things, look at this. I'm still in verse 15. For all things that I heard 
from my father I have made known to you. In other words, what he's saying is everything that the father said to me, I not only told you about it, but I demonstrated it. I walked with you. We went through the Jesus principle. You watched me do. You did with me, and I release you to do it. Remember when the disciples went out, and he sent them out two by two, and it was 70, and demons, they came back with the sin, and Lord, demons are even subject to your name. Wow. Peter, James, and John on the mountain of transfiguration says to him, Lord, it was good for us to be here. How many miracles have God performed in your life and there was a while behind the miracle you came out of stuff that you were not supposed to come out of the doctor said and gave you an evil report and yet still in the midst of the evil report God came in and said I'm a doctor that has never lost the case the devil had you numbered death was in your room and God said not today Can I come in your room for a moment? And we're sitting here in the house of God, acting like God owes us something. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. God does not owe us anything. There is a virus here that nobody's talking about. And it's called sin. Nobody's wearing a mask for sin because we don't want nobody to know about sin. But may I suggest to you, my brothers and my sisters, when you desert God, it's called sin. When you turn your back on the word of God, when we refuse to live God's word, Can, 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 I, can I walk in here? Will y'all stay with me just for a moment? Because I was amazed because Jesus told his disciples that you are no longer servants, but I consider you to be friends. There is that out of court relationship. When we pray, we pray, or when we praise, or when we praise, it's just praise. It's out of court stuff. You don't even have to be saved to be in the outer court because it's where all of the junk is in the outer court. Can I talk to you for a moment? Because I think that we get it mixed up sometimes when we are feeling good. May I suggest to you that the spirit of God has nothing to do with how you feel. How is it? That you can feel good in church and walk out the building and cuss somebody and still feel good. Somebody come on in the room because there's something that God is trying to get us to see. I called you into my inter court for a particular reason. Now this text is not talking about salvation. He's talking about fruit remaining. So he's talking to people who are already there, not people who are trying to get there. Look at the text. Look at the text. He's not talking to new believers. He's talking to people who are rooted and grounded in the things of God. People that have problems. Wait a minute. What do you mean they have problems? Did you not read the text where he said, I chose you? First two disciples that he chose was Peter and Andrew. Are y'all with me? Peter had problems. You really don't want to talk about Bartholomew. You really don't want to talk about Thomas. You really don't want to talk about Matthew, a tax collector. And you sure don't want to talk about Peter at all. Can we talk? You don't want to talk about James and John who tried to get their mother to go in to Jesus because he was a single man and asked the question, ah, when you get in with him and you seduce him, would you ask him if, my, if I can sit on his right hand and my brother, do you really want to talk this morning? These 
these are they that he chosen. These, this is his word. Here's what I want to ask you. Have you been chosen by God? Your situation and your circumstance did not change God's mind. And may I suggest to you today, family, that even today, where we are, God still has not changed his mind. He still calls us a good work. Jennifer, he calls us a good work. We are messed up, but he says that we are good work. He chose us. We didn't chose, choose him. I was on my way to hell on a skateboard. And all of a sudden, he knocked me off the skateboard. Wasn't nobody thinking about no Jesus. And if the truth were to be told, you were not thinking about him either. But we came to Jesus just as we were. Weary, wounded, and sad. Found in him a resting place. And we're halfway in. And we're halfway out. But we're still here. We call him a shepherd. We call him that the person who walks with us through valleys of shadows of death. But when it comes time for us to stand up for him, we are silent. My family, I have a problem with this because this text does not make sense with him pouring his heart out. The difference between a servant and a friend. It's when he talks about a servant. Here's what he talks about. A servant does his duty because he or she are required to do so. Stay with me. A servant has no relationship with his master. The master has no relationship with the servant. Let me break it down to you. On your job, you have a supervisor. As a workman, when you first come, you have no relationship with that supervisor. He or she tells you what to do, what time to report to work. When you take your lunch break, when you take your first break, and if you're late for that, you have problems. There is no relationship with that person because you're just there for the paycheck. I need some help in this Presbyterian church because here's what happens on our jobs. We miss what God has for us. The reason that he places us on the jobs that we are on is so that we can bring him glory. It is not there to make money. How is it that every Friday when we get paid, we're upset? We couldn't wait to Friday, but we're upset and start growling when we see how much they've taken out on us. And every time we do overtime, we get mad because they take more. Can I talk to the real church for a moment? Maybe you're not employed right now. Well, let's talk about your stimulus check. When you receive your stimulus check and it didn't come when you thought it was supposed to come, you keep checking the mail, you keep checking your bank account and it's still not there. And when it's not there, you start cussing. Come on in the room. And then finally, when it gets there, it takes you 15 minutes to spend it, and you've been cussing for two weeks. I can't get no help in this Presbyterian church. Servant works for a price, and that's all he does. But Jesus said, I call you friend. And so what? he really wants us to understand is you're still a servant but you're now a friend and you're brought into the inner court where there is a relationship 
and relationship says that I don't do it because I have to. I do it because I love you. Come on, somebody. Come on in the room. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I do it because I love you, God. I realize that you don't have to do nothing for me. If you don't do nothing else, you've already done more than what I ever expected. Do you know the miracle? The miracle is when we wake up every morning. Do you know how many people that lay down that don't wake up the next morning? And here we are, sometimes we forget to tell God, thank you. We'll look at our cell phones before we tell him thank you. Can I talk to to somebody in this Presbyterian church because here's what he says I call you friend but here's what he says I have chosen you with all of your mess well here's what I don't understand Chuck please help me unpack this what does it mean when he says to me I've been through storms I've been through rain I've seen the hot days when the sun was beating down and I couldn't hardly breathe. And he says to me, I called you a friend. And what I'm doing right now is I'm establishing things in you so that take your fruit may remain. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused here. Are you saying that the trouble that we've been through is the very thing that was necessary for fruit to remain? Could it be that he's telling us that what does not kill you will take you to the next level? But the thing that I'm looking at is where are we as a people this morning? Do we understand the reason that we're going through? I don't need this to preach to you this morning. But here's what I'm hearing in my heart. Where are we? I'm praying that your fruit remain your fruit remain that means that you have already produced the harvest but in order for it to remain you've got to go to the next level and the things that I have given you Patsy the things that I have given you are the very things that are necessary to cause the fruit that's on the inside of you to remain if you don't go through the fruit that's there will die because it has not been water today. So what are you saying to me? The fruit is being watered with more trial, with more pain, with more suffering. I have never seen a people that's afraid of pain the way the body of Christ is. And the way of life is in one of three facets. You're either in a storm, just came out, or about to go in. The good thing is that God will receive our praise and our worship. The key out of the storm is worship him when there's nothing to worship him with. If I couldn't say a word, I would just... Raise my hand. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying? Your pain is the premise for you going to the next level. I know nobody wants to go through anything, but Jesus bad a cross and went to Calvary. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. The reason that he calls us friends is because of Calvary. Stay with me, family. So he calls us friend. But in the text, it says something else. Did God know what we were going to do? Yes. Isn't it amazing that in Jeremiah 1.5, he says that before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you, called you, ordained you, and told you these words. Be not afraid of their faces. Moses, a murderer, I called you to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Gideon, a coward, but he put bravery behind him. I need you to go down and deal with the enemy. David, a little boy 
with a slingshot and a rock. Nehemiah builds a wall in a short period of time. Something that would have taken three to four years to build, he built it in six months. No! The oldest Bible, oldest book in the Bible asks the question, if a man die, shall he live again? First Peter 2 and 9 says that you are chosen generation. Somebody help me in this room. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Do you know who you are? The devil is afraid of you because if you ever wake up out of the coma, if the coronavirus ever turns you or the sin virus ever turns you loose and you open your spiritual eyes, here's what you'll see. There are more with us than with them. I'm preaching to somebody in the room this morning. Here's what God said in the conclusion of that text. He said something to them that blew my mind. And it almost seems as if, as if it is an oxymoron. Two conflicting statements because one has nothing to do with the other. In verse 17, he says something that contradicts verse 16 and 15. He says this, but I give you, I command you to love one another. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm confused. When your fruit remains and it brings forth more fruit, it has to be because of your love for those who are fruitless. The problem is, I keep telling you, there's more to the Holy Spirit than Pentecostal Sunday. The tongues was an outward sign of an inward manifestation. It was the love of God that was demonstrated on that day. And because love lifted them, then 3,000 souls got saved because of love not because of words. May I suggest to you, church, if we're going to be the church of the living God, the only reason that the fruit must remain is so that we can mature people in the things of God, so that we can move the kingdom of God to the next level. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I didn't say that your message is to stand in the pulpit and preach. But whatever ministry you have, before you cuss them out, how about showing them some love? I was talking to a young, people, a young person a couple of years ago, and the person said these words. If y'all do one another like y'all do, I don't even want to go to church. And the young person said this to me. Me and God, okay. I'm okay where I am. Because the example was not set by those who say that they have been called out. Can I ask you a question? When we get through preaching, when we get through singing and praying, because see what's amazing in this text that I didn't deal with, God will not accept prayers until love exists. Read the text. Read the text. And then he says, after all of this, the fruit remains. Then he says to them, he says, whatever you ask the Father. Why didn't he say that in the beginning? Because there are things that have to be in place. Family, please hear me before I take my seat. There are things that must be in place 
God is an orderly God. He does everything in decency and in order. And when it's not God's order, then what God does is he backs up. Have you noticed in this season that there is no word from God? It almost seems as if we are between Malachi and Matthew all over again. Years of silence where there is no word. The major evangelists have nothing to say. People are covering their heads because they don't want to catch nothing. But here's the bottom line. The same folk who are covering their head are out at ball games. They're in the restaurants. But these are the leaders. But God says in this season, I'll pull one up and I'll take one down. And I'll show you who's all about me if I'm afraid to lose my life then I'm going to lose it anyway. Family, listen to me. This way is not an easy way. What I'm saying to you this morning is something that has to be demonstrated among all of us. You want to see the move of God? Notice when prayer is accepted, when we do what God has called us to do. This morning, this message didn't make you jump up and down. It didn't make you run around the building. But it was the word of God that is sharper than a two-edged sword. Because the whole thing about ministry is this. If we cannot become doers of the word, then the word is no good to us. That means that it goes over our head. And we are not who we say we are. But family, this morning, here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to pull all of us in. Because all of us have missed it. All of us have thought something and all of us have said something and all of us have done things that are contrary to the word of God but the main thing that I want to get across to you is that God chose us and he still calls you friend everything that the father has revealed to him he has revealed to us Family, catch this. I will not leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you, Stacy, I'm going to send you the comforter who is the helper, the Holy Spirit. And what he will do, Reggie, is he'll lead you, guide you, Mother Mace. He'll, Mother Audrey, he'll lead you into all truth. He'll be with you. Things that you have forgotten that he has been teaching you about. Uh, Tremaine, he, he said this to us all. He said, look, I'll bring everything back to your remembrance. But then he says something else in Matthew 28. He says, go and make disciples. So family, let me ask you a question. Who is he talking to? If the kingdom of God is to grow, it has to grow by people who are in the kingdom of God. Let me give you another scripture. Forrest, hear me when I say this. John 9 and 31 simply says, now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of him and does his will, him he hears. John 1 and 12 says, and as many as received him, to them he gave the power and the authority to become the sons of God. Do I need to go on? Do you realize that you are royal priesthood? Do you realize that the angels don't even understand why God created you? He, they ask the question, what is man that you are mindful of him? Look at what he's done, and yet still you call him your friend. Family, please hear me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Do you know why the devil 
is upset with you because if you ever find out the authority and the power that has been given to you, Jesus said this, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. But he said if you've got faith as the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to mountains and mountains will move. Can I talk to you just for about 30 seconds? I got to get this over to you. Your faith is what brought you to where you are today. You say you don't have faith. Your faith may be weak, but guess what? The reason that you are here is because of your faith. The faith that you have has been the very thing that was necessary to get God's attention. You want to know how you got his attention? Because you're still living. I want to minister to a couple of people this morning that are in this room. You're here because the hand of the Lord brought you here. It's time out for us staying stagnant. We all got a different iteral sequences. We all have things that we don't like, things that we don't want to do. But can I say this to you? It is a command that we have been given by God that we are to love. And it does not mean that we just phileo you. That's the problem. Minister Inez, they missed this. We were looking at when Jesus asked Peter, Brian, Tina, here's what they were asking. Jesus was asking him, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter was saying, yeah, Lord, I phileo you. Jesus said, Peter, <laughs> do you agape me? He said to him, yes, Lord, I phileo you. Peter, do you love me? Peter finally got the message. Lord, you know all things. You know all things. Did you know where he wanted to get him? Right where he was broken. This is the same man. In Luke, I believe it was 22, where Jesus said to him, when Satan walked in the room, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that, I'm watching him, that he may sift you as wheat. <laughs> but, but, but Peter, don't worry about it. I've already prayed for you. I've become your intercessor before it even happened. See, here's how God deals with before the question is asked. He already shows up with the answer. Did Peter ask him to pray for him? No. But I've already prayed for you. And Peter, you're going to fall. But here's what I want you to know. When you are converted, Tina, here's what I want you to do. Share this mess that you came through with somebody else. The reason that people don't share their testimonies is because they have not been delivered from their mess yet. But when you've been delivered, you can tell folk where you've been. Hey, let me tell you, I walk with a limp. There was a couple that was here. Chapter Web, and they asked me to do some marital counseling for them. And I, Jennifer Tammy, I walked up to the couple and I said to them, I can't do marital counseling. I'm disqualified. The husband looked at me and he said this, you the one we want. I said, you want me to? He said, yeah, you're the one 
that we won't. Because your experience will keep us safe. While we're thinking about it, you've already lived through it. So we know that what you're going to give us is you're not going to give us mess. You're going to give us your heart. And they sit there. And I said to God, you still can use somebody like me. And can I tell you what he said? I have called you friend. Is anybody listening? There are some people in the room that are broken and you're ready to give up and you're messed up. Your mind is messed up. I asked the question, Chaplain Webb, the other day, who are you? It took me all day, Monica, just to identify who I was because I couldn't figure out everything that I started to say was my position. The question was not asked, what do you do? The question was asked, who are you? Do you know how many people that cannot tell you who they are? And because you cannot tell who you are, you don't know what you've been called to do. And because you don't know what you've been called to do, then you don't have a vision because a vision only comes when you know who you are. I'm talking to some people in this room and I know you're asking yourself the question. And if it took me all day, I just had to sit down and ask myself the question. And everything I wrote down, Brad, it wasn't me. It was my position. Who's in the room this morning? If you cannot tell us who you are, if you can't tell somebody who you are, then who do you really know? Are you really... embarrassing thing in life is to live your entire life and not know who you are or what you were created to do. Do you know that there are people that die spend their whole life following a dream of somebody else and when you ask them tell me about your dream you can't dream until you can identify who you are. I'm talking to somebody in this room that's been broken. And everything that you have been broken with is the thing that was necessary to bring you in so that you can identify who you are. You got wounds, scars, mistakes that you made. And yet still, the hand of God is still on your life. talking to somebody because after today this church has to change we cannot go a step further if we do I'm ready to close the doors because I don't want to be in a place where the spirit of the Lord is it's not if his presence is not here I ain't got no business being here but I'm talking to people who love God. But somehow in the process, you got lost. But the word of God is here to find us and to bring us back. They used to sing a song in the old church. And I never understood it. 
I just sung it because my mama said sang. They said, this joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. There is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is based on temporary situation. Joy comes. I asked a person, Tammy, this question a couple of years ago. Are you happy where you are and with who you're with? And the person said, yes. I turned around and walked out. Because the difference is happiness is based on what you see. Joy is based upon the weight of what God brings. May I suggest to you, if you're broken this morning, I promise you, you're not going to catch nothing. I promise you, you won't. Because if you hadn't caught it by now, you're not going to catch it. But there are people that are here that are broken. And you know I'm ministering to you. Look, y'all, let's don't play with this thing. If you need to come to this altar, come on now. I changed the service for a particular reason this morning. Not knowing that this was going to be God's perfect will for us. Because we hadn't done any announcement. We hadn't taken any money. I don't care. But here's what I do care about. I care about you. The condition that you're in this morning. And if you're broken, I don't want your money. I don't want your money until your money becomes your heart and your heart becomes your money and you love God more than you love anything else. If the wealth from you withhold <laughs> all of its silver and its gold, Carrie, you know where I'm going, and you have to be alone with mega fans. Just remember in his word how he feeds the little birds. All you got to do is take your burdens. <laughs> Somebody got it. Take your burdens, not to your friend, but take your burdens to the Lord and just leave them there. The altar is a bloody place. I'm looking for some people who are not afraid of the blood to get your hands dirty. You didn't wear your gloves this morning, but the Spirit of the Lord is here. And where His Spirit is, there is liberty. Let me say this to you. I'm way past my time. If God is ministering to you, You need to come to this altar. You've been cut. You walk with a limp. You're afraid of people because you've been done wrong by so many. You're hurt. You messed up. I'm not asking you what. I'm just asking you to bring it to him. You know why? Because he already knows about it. Well, somebody said, well, why do I have to come then? Can I tell you why? Because God requires it. Show me in the Bible where God just met a person and just let them do stuff. He always said, come to him. The woman with the issue of blood. Where did she come? She came to him. Because he had what she needed. Am I talking to anybody? Family, listen. Let's get past all this flesh stuff. If you need to be here, I don't care if you pastor, Indian chief, apostle, bishop, who take, I don't care if you need to come to the altar. Bring your behind. I'm sorry. But when it comes down to people, get things together. The music ministry is coming back together. But listen to me, family. Today, your life going to change. You went through what you had to go through to get you to this altar. Isn't it amazing that God loved you enough to get you to this altar? And you are here. And I promise.
promise you this. Today is going to be the first day of the rest of your life. Today is going to be the first day hey, of the rest of your life. I feel something happening at this altar. And it's not just the regular people coming, but you came because you love God. You came because you love God. Look, I may be acting crazy, but let me tell you, I'm so excited about you because I know what's going to happen because you came. God is faithful. He is faithful concerning you. So please hear me. Where you are, where you are, it's a paradigm shift. Before we pray, your mind is going to take a complete turnaround. And when you feel it, tell you this, his main objective is to take you out before you can complete your assignment so that when you stand before God, you, you have a, a what had happened was God says, you do know that there are three judgments that we're going to have to deal with. Hopefully, you won't be at the white throne judgment because when the white throne judgment, if we're standing there, then here's what happens. The saints and God begin to judge people. And when that happens, that is the final judgment. You better look at Revelation. Because guess what, y'all? We're living in it right now. The war of Armageddon is coming our way. And if you take the SP off the scores, what do you have? What do you have? What's the number one thing we're dealing with right now? When you sense the move of God, all I want you to do is just turn around. Just turn around. Turn around. The more you turn, the more breakthrough you The more breakthrough you
is on the lives of these people that are standing here even now. Come. Oh, yes, Lord. Your hand is on their lives right now. And God, you're moving in a way in this sanctuary like you've never moved before. And because you're moving, God, we're surrendering everything to you. We're surrendering things to you now in the name of Jesus. We declare it. We decree it even now. Father, move mightily. For we know that as you move, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is moving like never before. Like never before. The power and the presence of God is moving like never before. Now God, do a work even now. We're not afraid and not ashamed of the gospel, but it is the power unto salvation that when you sense a release in your spirit, start turning because the presence of the Lord is even in this room. So as we move God, we move in the power and the anointing of God. In the anointing of God. We thank you now for what you're doing and how you're doing it. You're healing. You're yes. setting free. You're delivering even while we stand here, God. We have submitted everything to you, God. And we know that by your word it's being done even while we're standing here and we have no fear. We have no fear. We have no fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we say thank you.